This is a brand new 2023 Subaru Legacy base model. Just arrived to the dealership. We haven't even bought it yet. This video is mostly about the dual seven inch displays for the infotainment system. We're also gonna take a peek under the hood. Perfect. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just get the Bluetooth ready up here. And you can just go to your Bluetooth settings. We'll just get it paired up. Perfect. So it should be looking for a legacy, just like it says up here. There we go. And then it might ask you for like two or three more things like contacts and messages, just so it can show you all of your stuff. And a, a fun call from unknown. Hello. Yeah, I'm going home with Sophie. You're going home with Sophie? Yeah. Okay, love you. Have fun. Love you. Bye. Bye. Oh, the contact was just not loaded. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, as the contact loads, they will actually yeah, show no, that. Says... There you go. Okay. Um, and then, you know, look, this is your phone screen, right? This is what happens when you push the phone button. It'll take you here. So you can uh, look at all your phone book stuff, right? Like you see, you've got the recents. You can also set some favorites in there just by hitting the stars next to people's names. Okay. okay. That's pretty much it. You can also access the messages. Um, it's not amazing. It'll, like, read you prompts and stuff, and then you can, like, say like generalized prompts does that make sense like how it will like give you a couple options to text back but not like whatever you want to say mm -hmm. so typically something like apple carplay or android auto is going to be a little bit better at like doing text stuff so that's nice okay. um anyway but yeah it's fine okay so that's that try hitting this house button for me and you'll see that it takes us to the home screen right this is what it's going to look like uh, yeah, unless you've got a phone here and phone there, that does the same thing, right? You can always just hit the button and it'll take it, or you can hit these. It's all the same stuff. Okay. Let's go I ahead. Try hitting this. radio for me, and we'll do a couple, just a preset real fast. I'll show you. Um, have you guys played with this at all? Uh, no. Okay, good. Just to be clear. So, um, this is just like any other radio. You tune, you use the volume over here, and then you push and hold on whichever one through six you want to be your preset this station can go in there right okay um so that's pretty standard as far as radios go you I can put it home it'll set just... that one in does that make sense mm -hmm. okay cool uh that's good there next try it media for me so this right here is uh everything it says here right so you can plug in an aux cord maybe do ipod iphone usb right here bluetooth all of that stuff if you want to play something like that through the car okay. and if your audiobooks podcasts anything like that that you would ever play through your phone via bluetooth just tap here, right? Push play on your phone, and it'll go. Okay. Okay, there you go. Um, so that is the main things happening on the screen here. You've got a couple other things, like Starlink. Um, Starlink is the old version of my Subaru app, which is something you don't have to worry about on this car, because it's mainly for, like, rem remote starting and stuff like that. Um, but you get the hard key, so it's not going to worry about that. Um, anyway, so Starlink is... If you update the car, actually, that might actually go away because they're discontinuing that app. So, anyway, you don't need to worry about Starlink. Okay. Settings is just like settings on your phone. Big menu of stuff you won't get touched most of the time. But feel free to rummage around in there. There might be something you end up changing. Feel free to let me know if you have come up with questions on anything in here. I'm happy to help you guys out. Okay. How do the updates work? Does it just like pop up a message and it updates over the air, or how does you that work? Can update it over the air, but really you don't need an update unless it like something isn't working. So most of the time you won't need to like actively be updating it or anything like that. It will just sort of uh, like if you notice something is being weird, then it might need an update, and that may be a bug that they've fixed. Right? Um, they've nailed this down pretty well at this point. They've been doing it for a few years, so this is much better than it was when it first came out. They've worked out almost all plugs so i don't think you guys are running into that but if you do that's how you would solve it okay, okay. um what so about the the air control settings like to change it from like mm -hmm. up in the you know upper to lower and stuff yeah. like that yeah everything like that that's all down here at which is where we're going since we're finished up here okay so um all of the air stuff is in the bottom of the screen right here you've got a little on button right there there you go right you've got fan up right fan down and then if you tap that right there anywhere in that bar it pops up a menu oh, gotcha. that shows you where you can touch all of your stuff right there show you where you're going there turn on your ac all that stuff right okay and then the warmer hotter controls mm -hmm. exactly and then you see you've got your temperature and that's all right here Sweet. so yeah you can sort of move that around as is <clears throat> okay um next stuff to go over let's talk about any of these vehicle control settings so tap there this is anything that's going to really interact with your driving. Um, things like 
Eagle Dynamics Control. Um, so you have all-wheel drive in this car, which is awesome. It's uh, like four-wheel, but all of the time. Subaru's all-wheel drive specifically is super good at doing its thing, right? Um, vehicle Dynamics Control sort of turns off some features of traction control which means you'll slip more. So that's a bad thing most of the time, right? Okay. There are like just a few scenarios in which you might ever use it. Most of them are like off-roading or if you're stuck. So stuff like that. Okay. Um, sometimes you need to spin to get out of some mud or some snow or some sand, but that's really the only time you might use that. Okay. Okay. Then, so it's just off then? Oh, let me show you. This will make it a little more clear. So if I turn it off, you get a dash light and that's bad. So that's what you can think of as. If you get the dash light, that's bad. You're gonna slip more, right? Okay. And then you can so turn, turn it, it there. Okay. No dash light is a good one. I okay. find that the easiest way to remember it. Perfect. Dash lights are bad. Okay. Um, especially since it says off, but it's anyway. So yeah, yeah that's okay. the way to think of it. This acceleration cruise control thing. So cruise control accelerates at a certain rate. You can change that basically. You can make it go slower. It comes oh, with nice. eco, or you can go to dynamic if you want to go a little faster, right? No big deal. Okay, oh my, went too far. Um, Okay, so that's cruise control. Auto vehicle hold, this one's kind of fun. It's just a convenience feature mostly. So when the car is at a stop sign or a stoplight, you can actually uh, activate that feature and then it will allow you to take your foot off the brake. Okay. So you just hang out basically until you're ready to go again. You tap the gas and then the car will drive normal. And then it's okay. sort of just like a washer and repeat. Um, mm -hmm. Should I explain how that one works? Would you guys ever use that or? Does that work like on hills and stuff too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's mostly for like, like I said, it's, it's largely a convenience thing. Like if you're in traffic and you're doing this like all the time, like it's for like not having to sit there with the brake or like a drive through. Any time in which you're like putting it in park would be good right now, but that seems weird, you know? Yeah. Okay. So anytime when that comes up, that's when I would say is like the prime situation for it. Okay. Um, I'll just show you real fast. It's not too bad. So you turn it on, you get a green AVH circle thingy right here. Okay. When you come to a stop, you can push the brake all the way in, like just physically all the way in, and that will start flashing, okay? When it's flashing, that means it's safe. You can take your foot off the brake, hang out, do whatever, pass food around in the drive-thru, whatever, and then you can tap the gas. It will stop flashing and go solid, and then just wash around your feet, right? You'll just go, okay. brake all the way in, there you go. Yeah, I know some people that have accidentally rolled into the back of somebody, and they, they uh, thought the person in front of them was going backwards. They're like, what's happening? And, uh, yeah, it was no, that is the worst, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, that would be a good thing to try out there, I guess, yeah. Um, uh, steering responsive headlights. This one is your headlights move in their sockets as you steer. So That's cool. awesome. That's kind of okay. just, yeah. Uh, you can turn it off if you find a reason. Um, next is our driving assistance right here. Uh, safety features, basically, right? <clears throat> You've got two. Um, all of them are talking about eyesight, which is the cameras up here, watching the road for stuff they can help with. Cool, a lot of stuff, but these are the main ones. Um, like pre-collision brake, that's what it sounds like. So watch out and make sure you're not gonna hit anything. Mm -hmm. It'll warn you, first of all, if you are, and then uh, so that you can just hit the brakes no big deal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you still don't hit the brakes, it will apply them to minimize that damage. Okay. You can turn it off if you need to. If I go in here, it's gonna make sure you're very sure you're gonna turn it off. Mm -hmm. As soon as it's off, you get a dash light, just like everything. Dash lights are bad, so you want that back on. No okay. dash light, everything's fine again. It's keeping you safe. There you go. And that's kind of how all your safety features are. They all default to on, and then if you see dash lights, that means they're off. Okay. And the dash light would stay on forever. That's correct, right? Okay. So, like, I could go and I could turn it off, and we could go do something else, right? And you'll that dash light will stay until you turn it back on. Okay. Okay. Um, the only reason to turn this one off specifically is if you're going through a car wash. Other than that, it's good to have it on all the time. Um, car washes are specifically the only unique scenario where it's okay to run into a bunch of stuff on purpose um <laughs> so feel free to turn it off in a car wash does it like freak out if it's on and it's like there's yeah. definitely been a lot of scenarios in which people get uh in trouble for it because like a car wash it's not every single one some of them are configured in a way that doesn't do it apparently but um a lot of them that are like the automatic car washes where they say put it in neutral don't hit the brakes right um so you would just go through right <laughs> however it will like see them and then it will hit the brakes and then it messes with their track and they get mad at you so anyway, it's a good yeah. thing to know um, like I said, it's not every time and it's not every car wash, but it's definitely a consistent thing. So okay. definitely be aware of that. Um, lane departure. So this one is the one where um, it can beep at you if you go to your lanes. It's got a couple other things it can do on top of that, like prevention function. This one I call the nudge because it will nudge you back into your lane. Oh, okay. um, I like the feature. The, my only problem with it is that it's hard to turn off. Um, so let's say we did both. That's what all function is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so if you were just going along and then it starts nudging you, but you're like, not right now, I don't want the nudge, stop moving my steering wheel. 
you have to tap a couple times. So it's one, two, three taps before mm. it stops moving your steering wheel. Which okay. is not like awful, but like not does ideal. that like disable if you like turn on your blinker or how does it know yeah, not to Yeah, if you turn on your blinker that then it won't nudge you. Okay, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I recommend warning buzzer starting out. Um, there's a similar feature that is much better, in my opinion, as we go along, which I think is the next place we're going. Let's tap this one here. Um, you've just got some units in here, and you've also got auto start stop. Um, auto start stop is when the engine shuts off, it stops signs and stoplights. It's kind of a new car thing. They're starting where it will save you on gas and cut down on emissions, stuff like that. Um, if it ever gets annoying, like if you're in heavy traffic or a drive through anytime you're like stopping and starting a lot, it might stop and start a lot, and so it can get kind of bumpy. Um, if that bugs you, you can just turn it off just like that. Okay. Is there like a time amount, like if you're stopped for like 10 seconds, it shuts off or is there some kind of... There's all sorts of stuff that it's based on actually. Um, you'll notice that's actually the same feature because a lot of people like to turn that one off, especially older folks that aren't used to it. Um, we'll turn it off a whole bunch. It feels like stalling the car, so, it's so I can't right blame there. them. But, okay. um, yeah, I noticed it when we were driving, and I mean, I've heard of that feature. I've never right, right, yeah. had a car that done it, did it before. Yeah, of course. So anyway, uh, to answer your question a little better, there's a lot of stuff that it depends on, actually. So like, it's got a giant list of reasons why it may or may not stop. A lot of them are tied to really obvious things. Some of them are more obscure. One of the big ones is like, if it's cold outside and you're trying to heat the car up, it won't turn the car off because you need the engine to do that, right? Cool. Same thing for if it's like hot outside and you're trying to cool the car down, you need the engine to do that, right? So a lot of that straightforward stuff is built in. Um, and they've added a lot more, so it's a little more conservative than it used to be. It used to be like most of the time it turns off, but now it's like most of the time it doesn't. Um, because a lot of people are like, it's too much. So they've like configured it to be a little less than that. So there's a lot of reasons, uh, aside from those obvious ones that they've been like, well, if this scenario, then maybe don't turn it off. Right. So there's a lot of reasons why it might not turn off and why it might feel a little bit random as to when it is and isn't just know there is a reason. Probably it might not be an obvious one, but there you go. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of the auto start stop thing. There we go. Um, that covers just about everything here. How do we feel about our uh, features as far as vehicle control and driving systems? Do you guys have any more questions there? Feeling pretty good? Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll move right along. That covers just about everything right here. Uh, I didn't mention, but these are pretty obvious, right? Your rear defrost and your front defrost are right there. Okay, let's talk about all these cruise control things right here. They're pretty fancy. So you've got EyeSight built in here as well that does a lot of cool stuff, but we'll just start with the baseline cruise control. So you turn it on, you get the speed, you hit set. That's all cruise control. So if you push that button for me, it will turn cruise control on. Let's actually, uh, uh, your door might be open back there. It might just show it to us a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. I just like the bigger screen there. Um, a little easier to see what's going on there. So normally this will be like what it shows up as, okay? There's a lot up there. Just focus on that thing is right there. That means it's on, okay? okay? So then you literally just hit the gas and you'll see it says set right there. Boom, that's cruise control. Okay. So largely, very simple. Um, then you start adding things on top of it that makes it a little bit more, right? You've got the same old resume so that you can like hit the brakes and go back to the last safe speed. You can also adjust the speed with the plus and the minus while you're in cruise control, you know? So like if you accidentally set it at 65, one tap will go up by five to 70. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you can hold and it will actually go up by one, two, three. Oh, okay. So yeah, kind of fancy. And then you showed us the setting where it'll make it more or less aggressive. Correct, right. yeah. Okay. So that's in vehicle control, and it says cruise control acceleration. Yeah, so you can do that there. Um, okay, so that's just those two, right? Then we have adaptive cruise control. So whenever you set cruise control, adaptive cruise control automatically activates. That is this car up there, talking about uh, those white bars in front of you, right? Each bar there is two seconds of distance that the car will watch that amount of distance from the car in front of you and apply the brakes to keep you that distance. So it will slow you down as much as it needs to to make sure that distance is there. And is that optional? You can turn that one off. Um, you, like I said, it's there by default, but you can actually, these buttons are to adjust the distance. If you hold either one of them, it'll turn it off. Okay, okay cool. Just like that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then hold it to turn it back on? Exactly. Good to know. I bet you can turn it off on our Toyotas. We just don't know how. Yeah. No worries, right? We didn't have such a good orientation. We didn't have one at all when we bought them. That is uh, all too all too common, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, so we've got uh, you can adjust the distance, right? So four is the maximum, and then you can hit this one, and it takes them away. One is the minimum, right? Mm -hmm. um, super fancy. Sounds like you've got a similar thing, right? Um, 
I don't know, every Toyota that I've driven, theirs hasn't been quite as good in my opinion. I really, really like the Subaru one. And I do get to drive a lot of cars because we drive used ones as well all day. So anyway, I've tried a couple of the adaptive cruise controls. Uh, like Mazda's was okay. I really liked Subarus and I, I drive a Subaru, so I use it all the time. Um, and then Toyota's, maybe the newer one is better, but I don't know. Um, so try this I love one. it and she like hates it. it. <laughs> Fair enough, right? You know, it, it's like it either is for you or it's not, no big deal, right? One thing that can be helpful is you can adjust this like on the fly. So what that I am clicking these buttons all the time if I'm using it, like sometimes I wanna be further or closer, right? Um, and so like on the freeway, I typically click it out one or two more than I would because uh, I like a lot of distance and I don't really care if there's a bunch or if there's people jumping in or not, I don't really mind. Um, but if it's traffic, I actually pull it in all the way to one because I'm like, uh, just get me close, right? Um, so and nobody it cuts be... in front of you and then it slows mm -hmm. you down. And exactly, then... exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, and again, there is one important thing that's different than Subaru is each bar there is two seconds of distance, which is going to change based on your speed, um, which is really, really nice because at freeway speeds, it's going to be further no matter what, but still a safe distance. And it like if you were set it on State Street for whatever reason, then it will be much smaller, but still a safe distance. Okay. So, cool. yeah, yeah, pretty neat. I like it. So try it on two or three, see what you think. Um, last, go and hit this one for me and you'll see that that comes up on screen. It looks like a steering wheel. That's called your lane centering. When it's up on screen right there, it will watch the lanes and everything like that. And it will like move the steering wheel and it will center you in the middle of them. Pretty okay. fancy. A lot like the nudge and that's actually the one I was going to tell you guys about. So again, okay. the nudge, three taps to turn off is not ideal. This one, right next to your thumb. Super easy, right? Perfect. On, off. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, and it's better because it centers instead of just <laughs> nudging, which I find to be a lot more uh, like the other one feels kind of like ping pong, you know, you're like bouncing <laughs> off the lanes. Okay. But this one is, is much more gentle. So, okay. yeah, Good. I really like this one. That being said, there is times to turn it off, right? Um, like I tend to, anytime I pass a semi, I like drift to like the far end of my lane because they're big and I don't want to be close to them. Mm. So I turn it off every single time because it centers me, which is not 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 over here i want to be over here right yeah. so Dad, anytime in which it's moving you in a place you don't want to be just turn it off no big deal one turns it on okay that is like the this main stuff off? that's like all of the the maybe hard features to try and learn okay. um those stuff is pretty quick we can run through totally it totally um fine. we have got paddle that's shifters so that's a nice one so you've got a manual mode on this car right here so you can do it and drive and shift through your gears manually by hitting the plus it's and the so minus and that will go up a gear or down a gear okay. um and then it will let you do that but if you stay in oh. drive it'll just go back to it's drive like after that. a second okay. if you go slide I right over into manual mode yell. you just slide it right over then it will stay in whatever gears you're putting it in so okay. it's a little more like stay there so we live up on the mountain mm -hmm. over here so like if we wanted to downshift exactly you just hit it on the paddle and but it has to be over in the m on the selector for it to stay there otherwise Correct. it's going to switch back exactly yeah and i mean it'll stay in the lower gear for like a little bit but it'll just go back to drive because it assumes you want to be in drive so yeah and if you is it bad like you can change that while you're driving right yeah of course yeah you can flip it all around and everything like that the okay. cvt itself is super good at protecting itself so even as you're shifting like if you try and do something on accident that would like hurt any other car it will just not do that thing like it, like if it red lines it'll actually shift like it'll just automatically do it it's okay. like uh we're not doing that nope and it'll just shift for you even if it's in the manual mode exactly yep so yeah it's really great at not hurting itself yeah okay so yeah you guys will use those all the time plus minus manual good there okay uh wipers these are pretty easy i think um if you want more go down so more than nothing let's go down once right there you go. If you want more, keep going down. There's constant. If you want even more, you can go down one more, and that's that. Okay. And then if you want off, you can push all the way up. There you go. Okay. Turns it right off. You can spray by pulling towards you. Um, and then you can adjust that intermittent with this ring right here. Okay. okay, there we go. This is all radio stuff. It's all really straightforward. So, like, you can skip songs and everything like that. You can. Uh, this thing switches this... Uh, if I turn off the cruise control, that screen up there, you can switch through that, and that's got a couple cool options in there. Why don't you flip through it? Yeah. So you'll see you've got like.
time and temp, a couple common things right there. What's playing, tire pressure. That will calibrate as soon as you drive like a mile. Okay. Um, or if you sit here for two hours, I've done it, don't do it. Can right. you answer phone calls and stuff from yes, something can. over there? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but there is like the pick up the phone and hang up the phone. Okay. As well as the hang up the phone has like the slash mute, right? So you can mute whatever's playing. So all that stuff is right in there. You can also like, here's your voice activation, right? So like if you push this, Please there is see. a Subaru assistant. I like to talk over her. Um, she's fine. Um, it's like the difference between Google Maps and any onboard navigation. All of the onboard stuff is just on this computer right here. And so obviously it's not a Google supercomputer, you know? Um, oh, well. So that's kind of the performance you get out of a, a voice assistant that's all done right here. It's not bad. It's fine. Um, if, if you say some like... Like if you have someone on your phone who has like a Japanese last name, it's probably not gonna understand you, but if you are calling John Smith, probably gonna do okay. okay. Um, however, if you wanna get your, like your Android Auto up and working and everything like that, that's the way to do it, because then you can get Google Assistant with that button. You just push and hold instead of tapping. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That actually reminds me, I didn't finish talking about Android Auto. Have you guys heard about that? Have you ever used that Android Auto? At I, the car I have. Yeah? Yeah. So, so um, you get the general idea. You can plug in your phone right here with just a cord to your USB port right here. Okay. And actually take your phone and it will mirror it up here. So you can do things like your music, your podcasts, your apps. Oh, okay. um, and then most importantly, like your maps up on there. And so you don't have to like oh, hold nice. your phone. Or you can like, just set your phone little, down like, there. Right here, right? And then you can just yeah. put your phone away. Oh, and okay. it's like the touch screen still works with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. So then That'd you can nice. like it'll it'll like show up as a little icon right here. So like in apps here, it actually shows us we've got Android Auto right here. I wonder. So yes, please connect USB. Okay. Right. So it's interesting that it only works if it's plugged in. You yeah. think that the technology is? I'm sure the technology is there, but <laughs> yeah, really, it's just that they were like, do we replace Bluetooth yet? Do we do that? And so um, right now it's you can have both at the same time as long as it's plugged in, right? But yeah, like even like our newest Outback models and stuff like that, they've made it so you can, and it kind of did like replace Bluetooth. So it's like, okay, you can pick one or the other, right? Um, and so they're definitely moving that way. But right now you can have both. Um, Would it also charge the phone yeah, yeah. at the same time? For sure. Yeah, it's a normal cord. So it's doing all the regular cord stuff and you get Android Auto. So yeah, most people don't end up using a lot of this stuff. They just use Android Auto because it's better mm -hmm. and cooler. So, yeah. so you say well, you plug it in. Does it like bring up anything on the screen to click on or you just have to yeah, go into yeah. apps so first? That symbol right there okay. will show up. Uh, I can't remember if it's right here or right here, but it'll show up on this home screen okay. if it doesn't pop up automatically. Mm -hmm. And then you can like hit the home button and it's a little app right there. And so you can just go out and in it and whatever. Cool. So there's all that stuff. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, most phone manufacturers are pretty good about it these days. Android Auto was a little bumpy for a while um, as far as just getting it set up. But most people are pretty good about it these days. It's, it's streamlined a lot. Um, but depending on like your phone manufacturer, it might take a second to get it set up. Yeah, we both have usually, Google phones. So okay, we should so usually, work. yeah, if you're like one of the main ones, like Google or Samsung, like you're probably gonna be okay. Um, usually it's just, you plug in, much like that, and it'll prompt you on your phone and say, do you wanna do this? You go through a couple pages, right? And then it does it forevermore and you just plug in. So okay. hopefully that's as simple as it is. Um, let us know if it ends up being too difficult. We might be able to help you figure it out. But mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of times you just might have to look up like, for the, my phone, how do I do this? Because everyone okay. uses it, right? But yeah. okay. what about like, say we're gonna both be driving this vehicle? Mm -hmm. um, is there? How do you switch between different phones to hook up? Like, is there? Yeah. Can you have multiple phones mm -hmm. paired and you just switch between them, or yeah, do you have to disconnect with one? Because yeah, so we're gonna also both be in the car, and right. which one is it gonna connect to? I guess yeah, I'm asking. Yeah. Great question. So obviously, Android Auto is really simple. Whoever's plugged in, right? Um, as far as Bluetooth goes. Whenever you're in phone or media, anywhere where you would use Bluetooth, you'll see it's got like a manage devices option. So you can go in here and it lists all the phones you have paired. Okay. I think you can have five or six. Then it'll say if, it, if one's connected and then if you had more here, it would say disconnected. Okay. So all you do is you tap on one and then it says, do you want to connect to this one? And then you say, sure or no, right? It okay. will default to connecting to whoever was in the car with it last. So whoever it was connected to last, it will connect to that one until you tell it to do something else. And yeah. then it will connect to that one. Okay. But then, so say, say I drove it and then she, and then I'm still in the house and then she drives, mm -hmm. it'll automatically pair to hers when she gets in. 
it will not. It'll only look for whoever was connected last. Okay. So but you, I can just switch it the way. Yeah. Just exactly. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So then you'll switch it, and it will only look for your phone until you tell it to do something else, right? So it's pretty one dimensional, but you can tell it to switch. But it, it looks easily, easily switchable. Exactly. Yep. And in here is also where you would add a new phone, right? So there's add new phone, and then it says okay, and then you'd go to your Bluetooth, right, and everything like that. Okay. So there you go. Ta da! Wait, no, for now. Um, Okay, so that's all the Bluetooth stuff. Does that answer your question? It does. Perfect. Okay. Um, uh, finishing up all that stuff, um, Source just switches between, like, all of your radio things, like FM, AM, Sirius XM, and then if you, like, put, like, a, if you connect to Bluetooth, it'll throw that in the mix. So it's just, like, whatever you could be listening to, it switches between all of that, just one big loop. Okay. Does this uh, base model have XM radio or satellite at all? I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think we've oh, it ever does actually. paid for it. But. Yeah. Um, so you actually, um, if it's got the capability, which this one does, which is cool, um, then you've got three or four months free when you buy the new one. So you'll have this one for a little while. You can play cool. with it. And then the the cameras that you pointed to up mm -hmm. there, what do those do again? So those are what do a lot of those safety features and stuff that I talked about. The centering and, the and centering nudging. And everything and... like that. And, and like the, the adaptive cruise control and like all of that stuff. That's all eyesight stuff. Okay. So yeah, that's what allows it to do all that stuff. What about um, as far as like backing up and things, are there any like included safety features as, as far as like, I know there's the rear mm -hmm. cross alerts and yeah, things like stuff that. like that or does it just show you on the screen and i believe this one will just have a backup camera there okay. can be different things on different models we can check pretty easy actually um let's go ahead and if i turn on your parking brake i'll show you how to work that in just a second too um so go ahead and put your foot on the brake for me i'm gonna shift it you might have to move this dude yeah um I'm too small. you're okay um yeah I i'm gonna shift left. it into reverse okay so keep your foot there okay and then we'll see here yeah so uh, this one's just the backup camera Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, we may as well jump straight into the parking brake. Um, this one is electronic, as you can see, right? I like to think of it just like the good old-fashioned handbrakes. So up is engage, down is disengage, just okay. like the good old-fashioned ones, um, except for it will want your foot on the brake whenever you disengage. Okay. So now you can try it, right? Down is disengage, so you would push, you'll feel it disengage, and then your park lights go away. Okay. So that's parking brake. Okay, Sweet. very good. Okay, uh, let's wrap up the rest of the steering wheel buttons there. Let's see, we did all of that stuff. We talked about that guy, volume. Okay, that pretty much covers everything. Feel mm -hmm. good about all that? Yes. Great. Okay, next, headlights. Fortunately, you've got an auto setting just like all the cars these days. Mm -hmm. There you go, set it and forget it. You won't ever have to touch that again. You're cool. good. Um, let's see, is there any buttons down there by your left knee? Uh, the pop the trunk button, obviously. Yeah. So there you go. That'll pop the trunk. And then this one just to the right of it, that's a brightness dial for your screens and stuff here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. Any of the last stuff is going to be on your actual all of your like buttons there, right? Oh yeah. You know, I adjusting your mirrors this, yeah. and everything like that. All of that stuff is there. Okay. Perfect. Um. Now, is there a gas pull tab on your foot anymore? I can't remember if this this one has. A what? So you know how like For to get gas, gas right? Um, oh. You know, it was usually a little button, like a little pull thing by your foot, right? Um. If you're not seeing it, it's not there. I'm just, like, okay. just push on the cap or something. Yeah, know? exactly. It's just like, Lit. that's what they're doing on the new ones. Is It's just like a back door. I like to think if your back door is unlocked, then so is the gas cap. Okay. You just push on it and it opens right up. But if it's locked, then you push on it and nothing happens. Okay. So when you get gas, do not worry. It's okay. Um, okay, that is that. Uh, the last things, if you guys wanted to see them, are I could show you where the spare tire is, and we could see you under the engine bay if you guys want to see that. Just basically show you where your fluids are if you want to see it. Uh, uh, sure. Good, then I'd can... like to see that. I looked at the spare already back there. Perfect. Yeah, why not? We'll check under the under the hood, and I'll show you where the engine latch is, too. I'll come around so you guys can see it a little bit better. The envelope is right up there. We've got here. It's right down under that slot. It's got a nice little arrow for you. And then basically everything yellow is anything you would be allowed to touch. It's basically just fluids. And they're all labeled, fortunately. Okay. So, like, you've got, you know, your dipstick, your oil, coolant, wipe fluid, everything like that. Um, and then, obviously, your battery. Giant red plus mark is the positive one. That's the negative one right there. All right. Perfect. And that's pretty much it. This is the 2.5 liter mm -hmm. yep. boxer. 2.5 boxer 4. Cool. So probably the easiest accessible uh, oil filter I've ever seen. 
It is true, which is funny because everything else looks very, very <laughs> difficult. <unfamiliar. laughs> yeah, everything, the spark plugs and everything is, yeah, we'll probably bring that back here to have it service. I think, I don't know what the deal is, but everybody these days just puts a lot, a lot of plastic in there, so. Yeah, I don't know, but, yeah, yeah, it looks nice. We make all the normal stuff that anyone would do anyway, like pretty accessible stuff. So. And then this this is a new-ish, like at least somewhat redesign over the previous year. The front, do you know? Yes, yes. So this specifically has been sort of redesigned the grill right here. Um, it used to have a couple less of these, basically. Okay. Um, and I think they may have done some with like these kind of transfers as well. Uh, this does. This one does not have fog lights, but correct. it has the little spot for them down there. That's correct. And you can get them installed after if you guys ever really decide you need fog lights. But what about the? We looked at so many different vehicles. The yeah. the warranty on on this. It's like five Same years, old, sixty. Uh, this one is uh, just the basic three year, thirty six thousand is going to be your main one. And then I believe there is a like on a couple of the parts. Drivetrain. Uh, yeah, there's a longer one. Okay. Things like that. Finance will know everything about the warranties and they can tell you about anything you might want to worry about or get extra coverage for or anything like that. Overall, I'm quite impressed. The dual 7-inch screen had me a little bit nervous at first. I thought it was going to be kind of really cheesy and I wouldn't like it, but it works great. There's a 2023 Subaru Legacy base trim boxer engine. Seems to run very smooth. <laughs> it's very, very clean. <laughs> engine oil filter that's probably the most accessible one i've ever seen cool